Thanks a lot for coming in. Good morning. Happy to be here. Something about this community appeals to you? This is a wonderful place to live. <laughs> for Kelowna Now, this is Kent Molgat. And we're joined by Mariah Van Zer, the strategic transportation manager for the city of Kelowna. Do I have it right? Transportation planning manager. See? Long title. It is a long title, yes. Okay, yes. so I, I wanted to talk to you, though, because coming up later this month, there's a chance for the public to give their yes. input yes. On, the, on the 20-year transportation plan? That's correct. That's correct. So tell me about what, uh, what, uh, what are we planning and what's it all about? All right, so we're really excited. We have this event coming up on April 24th. It's really an unprecedented opportunity for people to add their voice to the regional transportation planning process. Um, so this event on the 24th is going to inform two key regional planning efforts. Uh, the first is the Regional Transportation Plan, or RTP for short, and the second is the Okanagan Gateway Transportation Study. Um, and the RTP, one of the reasons I'm excited about it is that it's the very first one that we're doing for the Central Okanagan region. So never before have all of the players in the Central Okanagan, meaning the cities of Kelowna, West Kelowna, Peachland, Lake Country, WFN, the regional district of the Central Okanagan, they're all working together to look at the future of transportation in the reg region okay. to see yeah. where we want to get to. Okay, so you're excited about it. But is the general public excited about it? What, what can you do to make sure that people say, hey, this is, this is topical, this is important, I should get involved? Well, what we really want to do is we want to hear from people what matters to them. So what kind of future do they want to see for transportation in the region? Um, how, how could we make it easier and more accessible for them to connect to regional destinations, to get to the airport, to get to the university, uh, Okanagan College, or the hospital? Um, how can we make it more enjoyable for them to access their job, school, family, friends? We know that transportation affects everyone, right? No matter right. where you live, the transportation network and the, in, in the facilities that we have available for people to move around is going to affect their lives. Okay, um, this community tends to not embrace public transit as much as it should. So how do you strategize to get people to be more likely to take advantage of public transit when it's made available? That's a really great question, and I'm glad you asked it. Um, one of the things that uh, we heard, so last year uh, we did uh, an engagement process where we asked people about the future transportation that they want to see. Um, and we heard that people want a regional transportation network that makes it easier to get where they want to go in a way that supports the economy, uh, supports quality of life, and supports environmental quality. And so how do we do that? Um, well, we really need to make it easier for people to have a bunch of different ways to get around. So right now, we know the majority of people hop in their car, right? Yes. Um, that's because for a lot of people, transit or biking or walking just isn't that convenient. So how, what are the opportunities that we have to make make those other ways of getting around more convenient and more enjoyable. So those are the kind of ideas that we're looking for from people. Right. And so um, what are the reasons why people stay? Okay, convenience, but also is there an image problem with getting on a bus? Um, it's certainly been shown that uh, that can be a challenge for people sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so you, there's, there's other things, apart from public transit, there's, uh, we see the emergence of like ride share. Is that, is, are we going to be seeing, or do you anticipate a lot more of that as part of the transportation Absolutely. that we see in the future? Absolutely. And this is one of the things that I think is interesting about this plan. And one of the reasons I hope people um, come out and get involved is because the future of transportation is likely to look very different than it is today. So we see things like shared mobility options coming online. Uh, that's things like bike share, car share. Uh, we see things like um, more electric and autonomous vehicles. Uh, we see things like um, uh, just different options for the ways that people can get around. Right. And so what that means is it's likely to be very different. The way your kids and my kids get around in 20 years is probably right. going to be pretty different than it is today. So right. we want to hear from people what's important to them. Will self-driving cars change things in terms of like efficiency will we i don't know how long it takes to come into place but i'm envisioning that once we uh sort of automate how cars are following each other across a bridge for instance mm -hmm. suddenly maybe we don't need a second crossing in Kelowna as early as we thought if cars start cooperating with each other and flowing at an even pace is is that part of the mix 
That's just one example of how driverless cars could could change the way transportation works in terms of yeah the capacity of our existing network it could could uh, increase that. Right, and um, in the re in the real short term, we're um, the electric bikes are on mm -hmm. the immediate horizon. Um, is that is that is actually does your does the scope of this plan get right down to that level? Those sorts of things. That in right now, where we're at is kind of the ideas level. So right now we're generating ideas. We want to see creative solutions to the problems that we're experiencing today and to where we want to get to in the future. Okay, so here's an idea. What about everything's light, on the table. Yeah. Okay, what about light rapid transit? You know, Gord Lovegrove out at UBC likes to tout that one and I hear other people kind of going, oh, come on, you know, that's, that's, that's not real. We've talked to Gord Lovegrove and so we're, um, we're, we've definitely got that idea on our horizon. It's something we're definitely taking a look at. Um, and so we'll be evaluating. You don't see that happening soon, though. Um, it's hard to tell at this point, um, but most likely with something as expensive as light rail transit, uh, you're likely to need the ridership and the population density. So questions would be sort of like, where would that go? Um, right. So that it would be actually economically viable. And we're just a bit small yet, population-wise, to support yeah. that? Probably, yeah. So what do you envision 20 years from now, you know, how would I see transit if I suddenly sprang forward 20 years? What's, what's it going to look like? Well, I think in the future, the reality is going to be that our personal smartphones are going to be a lot more important to how we get around than our personal vehicles. We're starting to see that already in larger cities than Kelowna, uh, where people are trying to figure out how, how, how to go through their day. So for example, say um, you, know, you hop in your car, you drive to work, you need to drive to a lunch appointment, and then you need to drive home or something like that. Right. In the future, that might look a little bit more like, oh, you hop on the bus, and because uh, it's maybe a little bit more easy and convenient for you to get to it. And then at lunch, oh, maybe you want to get some exercise, enjoy the sunshine. So maybe you have to take a bike share uh, that's close to where you work. And then, oh, you had to work late, so you missed your bus. Oh, no worries. I called a ride hailing vehicle. I took an Uber home right. and you were able to get home. So that kind of ability to uh, mix and match your travel modes right. sort of on the fly gives people more choices. Do you think that as, uh, you know, people from, you know, the, the younger generations who have so embraced technology, it'll be easier to make these changes with them? Because I think there's people that have never Absolutely. taken an Uber in their Absolutely. lives of my generation, a lot of them. Absolutely. And, and, but, but younger people are embracing all of these things. Absolutely. So, you know, maybe some of, the, some of the older generation might never change much, but there's so many people so that are coming into the workforce now that are all about all these things. And you want to know what one of the good things is, even if that, that is true, and I will definitely say that, um, but for folks that maybe aren't really keen on changing how they get around, one of the advantages is that if we do add more mobility options to the mix, that means that there's going to be fewer people on the road in front of them in their right. way. So for people maybe who are elderly or um, you know maybe have diverse abilities, not able to bike or walk, um, that means more capacity on the road for those that really do need to drive to get to where they're going to. Right. So it's really not bikes versus cars. It's really how do we create an ecosystem of mobility options uh, to get to people where they need to go. So you have an event like this one about transportation. Do you expect people to be jamming in the doors or is it going to be, you know, crickets when you start that thing? Um, we're actually seeing a pretty high registration already. It is a free event, but you do need to register. And um, so we're hoping that people who want to add their voice to the regional transportation planning process will go to the smarttrips.ca website. Uh, that's S-M-A-A-R-T-T-R-I-P-S dot C-A and register for the free event. Uh, it's a half day on April 24th in the morning at the UBCO campus um, and it'll be kind of in the small sort of table topic focus group format okay. and the opportunity to really add your voice to the conversation right. of connecting our region and so how you, can we do that. So you really might get a chance to actually, you know, spill out some input. Absolutely. And for those that can't attend on April 24th, I don't want people to be upset. Um, we're going to have an online engagement platform as well. Okay. So we'll be rolling out a questionnaire and a way for people to review the draft plan content and add their voice um, in the convenience so of So I can put my too. whole transportation thesis right in there. You can. <laughs> Thanks, for telling, you <laughs> Thanks <laughs> for telling you. Thanks for telling you. I'm Mariah Van Zare from the City of Kelowna, and thank you for watching Kelowna Now.